Hello everyone. How are you? Today I just want to talk. I want to talk to you. All of you, no matter what play style you like. And this is going to be hard for some of you to hear, but I want you to stay with me and listen. Because this is an issue that's been around since the beginning of life as we know it. And for it to be the division is just a small iteration of this entire concept. The fact that since the original division came out and after we realized what it was, it quickly developed into something into this competition between the two styles of play. DPS and skill. What type of player are you? I'd love to see that ratio in the comment section below, so just let me know what you prefer and why. I personally am considered a hybrid through and through, so I'd like to use this identity to bridge the gap between the two groups. But to get into the meat of the discussion, let's approach this from multiple angles. And I've been in almost every stage of the perspective I'm about to present, from a normal gamer to a YouTuber. So I think that many of you will be able to relate. Now, I've always, even before becoming a YouTuber, been an advocate of challenging the meta, whatever it may be. I feel like it's the ultimate David versus Goliath mentality. And I love challenging myself. A lot has happened lately. And I'll be honest. I've never had so much backlash for a video that I uploaded before this one. I made a claim, which was proven to be wrong by the community who challenged it. I could admit that, and I apologize for misleading anyone. But I didn't realize it was a mortal sin to make a claim on a game five years old. Be that as it may, players feel how they feel about it. But from my perspective, I don't think that many of you really know me as a content creator. My videos typically consist of off-meta PvPvE builds, meaning builds that can be played in both PvP and PvE. So the builds would tend to have unconventional roles that fit both at the same time. This build that I uploaded recently is a prime example of that. Check it out to see what I'm talking about. But a build like that, 9 times out of 10, will never mathematically or statistically equate to being the strongest. In fact, there's actually really no way to gauge a build like that because its outcome of success depends on a combination of the player's skill and the build, which is why they're so appealing to me. So when I made the striker skill build, I was genuinely excited about the concept. This led to me making the claim that it hits harder than any all red striker build. Since then, I've changed the title, but I still don't understand why it infuriated so many players. The point I'm trying to make is that the title was a reflection of how I would normally format my off-meta titles. I understand now that for others who take this game way more serious than me or anybody else, that I should respect that aspect and format my videos accordingly. But let me give you an example of how I would normally format my titles and how it relates to where I'm going here. The point I'm trying to make. Remember that insane true patriot pestilence meta back in the day that was 2 million armor which nobody can conquer? It destroyed anyone who went against it. You couldn't face tank him, period. It was titled, The True Patriot Pestilence Meta Counter Has Finally Arrived. Or, the build that I made called Insurmountable. It was titled, This Is Meta for Legendary Summit. I have so many more, but the point is that no matter what, regardless of the numbers or the statistics or the math, the result is that I unequivocally proved that the build worked as intended. The meta was countered. Or in the case of Insurmountable, I genuinely felt like that build was my meta. I could dispatch legendary enemies solo with, with insane damage and some awesome survivability. One of my recent videos was titled, The Alternative Incursion Healer Build that, that You Can't Afford to Ignore. Someone even asked me, but can you afford to ignore it though? And I know what he was thinking based on what works unequivocally or what works the best. And I replied, yes, because it's fun and you can get through the incursion easily using it, even if statistically the future initiative healer may be better. Here's one more example. Soak Disco made an awesome striker backfire build that is probably the unpopular choice amongst certain individuals, but the build slaps and some people love the idea of stacking insane amounts of crit. Shout out to Soak Disco, by the way, he's an amazing content creator. Now this message I'm trying to portray can't be any clearer. But no matter what, there'll still be people making comments to try and make it a negative message or point out something I say to sway the narrative. At that point, it's not even about whatever claim was made. 
But this brings me to my next point, because I want to attempt something that is rarely done in situations like these. I want to make an alliance. The Division is a great franchise, no doubt. That's been proven by the diehard and passionate player base it has. It's honestly probably why your comments come with such passion, such fury. It's for the love of the game. I get it. But please, this has to be balanced out. So many players get isolated because their build isn't meta. But just because their build isn't meta doesn't mean it's not strong. So this results in players getting kicked and not even bothering to seek out matchmaking anymore in fear of this experience repeating itself. Now here's the context. The division is a unicorn, meaning that it surpasses the status quo of the concept of build making in a league of its own in that category wherein almost no other game can conceptually compete with it. So why would you then limit its potential by not creating out of the box builds that work, which is 100% doable? Some more context. The new incursion just came out and everyone promotes the same build composition. Three all red striker with one future initiative healer. This is the meta for beating the incursion very efficiently. I get that. But guess what? That's not the only way, fam. Some will say I can do 10 to 13 minute clears with that setup. Okay, bravo. I get that too, especially when you consider players who have jobs and need to hurry up and get their weekly run in. Or you might just want to hurry up and get the exclusive exotic that's offered. But aside from that, I don't understand the urgency of it all. This game is five years old. Is there some secret achievement we get for speed runs? Is it more than just a spot on the leaderboards? Is there some special trophy you get? I just don't get it. So this begs the question, why do you get so upset when someone disrupts the flow of that speed run mentality? Because if you keep thinking that way, you'll never open your mind to even consider other builds. And that, my friends, is doing the Division 2 a disservice with all that it offers in the build category. And just know that I'm an advocate of all builds. I don't discriminate. I just don't think that players should be looked down upon when a build concept is presented as an alternative to what's been proven to work. And let me give you a small example. I just made an alternative healer build using ongoing directive and an empathic resolve chess piece. This is an alternative to the future initiative, which has opportunistic and a 25% damage buff to allies at full health. Both have BTSU gloves. Now my ongoing directive does not offer opportunistic, but it does offer hollow point ammo, which I can give to the team more than I can provide the opportunistic buff because once they have the hollow point ammo they can spread the bleed to a different enemy which continues the buff my teammates are also not required to be at full health to receive empathic resolves buff if you look at that video's comment section you'll see that i already have more than a few comments on that video claiming that this alternative healer build provides zero value to the team furthermore that it hurts the team how can you possibly believe this seriously it has to be emotional. This is what I mean. Just open your mind to other build ideas because first of all, nobody's winning anything for speed running activities or having the build that seems to hit the hardest. And I've seen this mentality in the skill build players too. I'm not just talking about DPS, but DPS has been the latest hot topic. We all know that the Division 3 was announced not too long ago and I can't wait for that to come out. That being said, we as a community need to come together and stop fighting and bickering over builds because when any build is optimized correctly i think that it could be as powerful as any meta build out there just look at it from this perspective right and you have to step out of your own point of view to really hear what i'm saying not everyone can run a dps build as good as you people have potato aim that's just facts that's just true but at the same time they could be surgical with a turret be it placement or timing whatever I'll give you a perfect example which will sum up all of what I've said so far. There's an achievement and a mask that you can get for completing the incursion on Flawless where nobody in the group can go down. Hats off to those who've done it already, but not everyone can do it the DPS way. And I want you to picture this with me for a minute. What if there were an entire team of skill builds fully optimized using this strategy, especially now that we have the capacitor, 
you can actually have a 1.3 million armor six tier skill build that hits like a truck this would not only increase your survivability but also give you the skills you need to help get through the incursion with ease think of this when first starting the incursion the first area you wouldn't even need to be in range of the turrets just shoot the oxidizer to destroy them both from a safe distance now this is equally as effective as the dps approach if not more but while being a lot more safe there are so many ways that I can think of playing the incursion efficiently with different builds, like a healer that's not future initiative or not ongoing directive for that matter. No gear set at all, but instead one that's all brand set based with the attributes rolled and listen here with the attributes rolled to skill damage and repair skills so that the healer could actually equip a damage skill alongside the restore hive to assist the team in damage while maintaining the strength of a reliable healer. That's just one idea. And you see, certain team build compositions have been tested and proven to work, which is what creates metas, actually. But some team build compositions have never been tested extensively like the ones that have been proven. Instead, they've just been dismissed because you think it won't be as effective. Well. I have something I'd like the community to participate in. And I personally am going to get a group together myself to pull this off, but I want you to try it as well. I mean, what have you got to lose? So here it is. Run the incursion with all skill builds and use whatever you like. Test it out. Figure out what is the most optimal build in that category, the same way you would do for a DPS style of play see what you come up with i've actually done this a long time ago in a roosevelt island legendary mission i convinced my squad to all put on the same build i had the artificial hive and this was even before the capacitor came out it was when nsync was first released but just imagine how strong this would be now the build is called the universal soldier if you want to check it out on my channel and it's actually the build i went into the iron horse raid with and was wildly successful now listen this is a great opportunity for us as a community to utilize our knowledge and builds alongside some others who are very good with the math, who can calculate the damage down to a T in ways that others can't. Join forces and come up with some of the strongest team build compositions that haven't been discovered yet. The tanker fight would be a breeze, not to mention bosses getting chunked left and right. But I'm just throwing ideas out there and my intention is to bring the community together and instead of criticizing each other, look at what each other's strengths are and build from there. And I'm not naive about this, okay? I know there are some things that just don't work. Talents that haven't been touched by the community for years, that's very obvious, but I'm not talking about those. I'm referring to the untested compositions that could potentially shock the community if something special were to be discovered by doing that. But let me wrap this video up because it's getting long. Since the announcement of Division 3, I feel like this game is officially on its last legs. More of a reason to not be as competitive as we are. And if we could find ways to come together as a community, I really believe we can accomplish monumental achievements. It's funny because I know <laughs> that even in this video, there will be comments hating on the idea. Negative Nancy's, you know, misery loves company for them. It's always going to be the same. Nothing will change in their mind. Speaking of change, the majority of people in general find it difficult to adjust to it. But I'm genuinely trying to change the narrative totally. If I can, with your help. I'll see you in my next video. Be right out.